Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. Today we're going to have a look at some solar PV testing and some of the unique features the TIS kit has in enabling us to do that as easily and safely as possible, whilst also ensuring the data is accurate. There are some really powerful and unique features to this PV check in particular and I'm going to run through those on this video today. In a real world environment, this is on a solar PV system that we've installed. There is challenges, um, certainly in the winter months, with gathering those test values sometimes. And I'm gonna run through those in the real world, right here, right now, and show you how I get on in gathering the data to prove this solar PV system is all as should be. It's much easier when the inverter and panels are close together to get the readings that we need. However, in circumstances like this, which is usually what we're faced with most of the time, where the inverter and all of the final connections are much further away from the array, using this and a lead to connect into the PV check becomes quite troublesome. And that is where the Solar O2 or Zero 2 comes into its own because that is a remote transmitter. It basically takes the data from the Iridians detector and sends that back to the PV check through an RF link and it also sends the inclination from up on the roof as well and the temperature from under the panels so all of your efficiency readings are based on real world data if you've got shading on the array if the weather's not quite so good as it is today and our lux levels are really really low all of that is going to be transferred over to the PV check so you can see if your panels are performing how they should be based on the manufacturer's data sheet and the weather conditions at the time. And that's really useful to us as installers because obviously we're relying on the data that the inverters are perhaps telling us to see if our arrays are something like about right. But through the winter months, especially when we've not got a great deal of sunshine and it's a bit difficult to gauge, checking correctly with the appropriate test instruments is a way of offering total compliance you know you're not going to have a problem and need to be jumping back up on the roof a few weeks later because there's something not quite right and you can prove an evidence to the customer that when you installed the system it was performing as expected so that is the solar o2 from tis and that works in conjunction with a pv check and we'll have a look at how those tests come together through the course of this video. Okay, so we get a really handy help menu that shows the earth connection and the common connection, which are the blue and green ones on the top. They need to run off to the earth at the inverter and the array um, itself, and then we know that we've got that um, connection between the two. If your array isn't earth, then obviously you don't need to do that test. We've then got the pos and neg, which basically are the red and black here, and they run off to be connected into the DC cables on your inverter. And this is where having an isolator remote to the inverter comes into its own. For me, it's all well and good that you're turning off this little DC isolator on the underside of the inverter there, but there's still voltage present on these while you're making connections into your test instruments. And the time we're at most risk as electricians is when we're doing maintenance and testing. So being able to remove that voltage while we make our connections is a huge sensible approach in my opinion. I, I don't understand why we're trying to work away from that. But another story altogether, we can make those connections now and then we can have a look at how this test sequence plays out with the PV check. And so there we have it, I've removed the DC string from the Solax inverter and used my nice little DC isolator over here. So we've got our meter now measuring out on the roof, so we've got our 46 watts Per meter squared it's not the sunniest day outside but if we hit test now we should be able to run through that auto sequence i've just linked out the common and the earth we haven't got access to the array today to make those connections and in some cases your array is maybe not earthed in any case we can still run through these tests it's going to give us um, the results in terms of safety so we've got our 100 mega ohm passed and we've got that bond value recorded we've also got the data on the voltage and the currents that's been recorded off these panels based against the information we've entered for these Trina 415S type panels. And you can do all of that as I showed in your archive modules. So if you need to create a particular um, panel, you can put that in there, name it. So if the Jinkos 435s or whatever, and then you go through and enter all the data off those date sheets 
and then when you come to do your test it will give you the right results based upon that and obviously we'll show the efficiency tests as well a little bit later on and if you want to you can do your insulation resistance test as a separate test altogether again if you press the help menu it'll show you how to test um, and connect up your leads and then make sure you've got no issues to earth with your DC strings and the same with the protective earth continuity testing as well all in one super duper instrument and as I said you can store all the data and then look at it in the software as well should you wish but even so the test results um, can be transferred over to a certificate for your commissioning and such separate to any report of the efficiency data which is fantastic for us handing over systems to clients so the big worry for us as installers when we're handing these systems over is are they safe and we have the existing worries to do with the AC side of things often that's kind of pushed to a side but it is very important same as always and using the TIS MFT Pro Plus we've got everything in there that helps us achieve that so if you're installing earth electrodes for example this can do your ground spike resistance measurements and also be able to do it through the ZE route too and then any of the other tests that we normally have to do in terms of proving safety for a new circuit it has that covered off and some. There is loads of other extra features in that test set which I've demonstrated before on prior videos. So if you're interested in that, go and check those out. And then the new thing for us as installers is testing off all of the solar and battery elements of our installations. And that's been a big worry of mine, actually proving and evidencing that these things are working as they should be. And if there has been any mistakes made through the course of installation, that we can pick them up in the testing process as we would with traditional AC systems. And the ISA test and the PV check are a great way of ensuring that. So we can verify safety. So we know we've got no um, issues with our insulation through the insulation resistance testing, that our earth paths are all in place, and that the currents and voltages that are present in the DC strings are as they should be. And then more um, for proving your actual sales pipeline if you like so when you're telling a customer that these panels will perform in this way on this roof elevation because some software or calculations we've done through the various manuals and books that we've had on our training courses you can evidence that at the point of installation and say the weather was like this today the iridians levels were this today the temperature were this today and the panels should perform like that based on what the manufacturer's data sheet is telling us and they did perform like this and as long as those two things are close enough to each other in terms of tolerance then you know you've got a system that's going to operate as intended and as designed and I think that's great before you leave site to be able to prove and evidence that wonderful especially as we are now in autumn and winter when we've not got a great deal of sunshine hitting onto those arrays obviously if it's 25 degrees C outside it's bright glowing sunshine at the perfect angle onto the panels those standard test conditions can be really helpful and you can look at the voltages outputs and currents through the inverters themselves and have reasonable confidence that what you've done is right but when those standard test conditions aren't at play which i would say in the uk is 99 percent of the time to be honest being able to evidence them through efficiency test and share that data with your client in your mcs handover packs saving it into your QMS manuals. It's absolutely great assurance for you as a contractor um, longer term as well. If an issue was to come up with a piece of equipment, you can say, well, we installed it. It was working at the time. This is how it was performing. There's obviously been an issue with a product where it's defective. We can find it and get that replaced under warranty. So TIS have us covered off with this gear and there'll be a link in the description if you want to go off and check those out. So there is a process to follow in terms of getting the Solar Zero 2 to work with this when you're doing the efficiency test. So if we go into the efficiency test on the PV check, you see it starts to establish a connection. Down here we've got the flashing icon to show it's looking for a remote transmitter and it's measuring some of the other figures based on the connections it's got. But with the O2, if we turn that on, you'll see it starts to power up and then we've got the little icon at the top there to say it has actually found a connection but we need to go into set and then you can see we've got our specific values for our transmitter I'll show you that in a minute but they're set to 24.33 um, and we'll have a look on the back of the iridians meter in a sec but if we press set again it should take us back into the measuring mode now what you then need to do is start the test on this instrument so it says waiting for start and then this now says hold to get into some better light and it has a countdown so it runs through that countdown and then when that's finished it can be taken away to start logging data at the array itself so it, it basically 
stores the information within itself to bring back to the instrument for analysis. So we just wait for that to, to count down and then we can go off to our radiance meter which I've already got put up on the array now and we can have a look at what values are coming off that and compare it to what we'd be expecting to see. So you can see we've just dropping down to the last few seconds on that little countdown where it's doing its link up with the instrument and now it's ready to be taken away. The instrument itself has swapped to say it's now um, recording and running. So I can take this now off to the Iridians meter, connect it up and it should log the data we need. So you can see it's saying ready on the screen there and it's recording the Iridians coming off the roof. You can see I've popped the cable out through the little window here and rather than climb up the ladders onto the roof while it's a bit wet and slippery, I've popped it on this roof up here which is at the same pitch exactly as the roof up there where the panels are on. So while it's not going to be super duper accurate and obviously this isn't real world, I'm testing a system at home where the scaffold's not here. Um, yeah, it is what it is, but it's going to give us a reasonable amount of data to compare in the PV check. So if we look here, we'll just leave that sat collecting the information it needs and then we'll go and check it back on the PV check in a minute. Okay, so back at base see it says it's still recording that says it's still recording if we hit the stop now uh, remote unit selected I need to enter and it should stop the recording um, and then we can gather that data and see exactly where we're at for analysis see it's just trying to establish that connection we make sure it resyncs back up which it's doing it's now downloading that data into the PV check and it's waiting to analyze it and then we've got all of the data we've recorded so we've got the iridians the temperature data the voltages the current and such and you can put that into the software as well and check it through um, compared to the panels you've installed and the data sheets and everything and produce a report and if you go off and look at eFix's channel they've demonstrated the software really well already as an installer i just use the screen there and make sure what we're measuring is what we'd expect and that's enough for me but if you're wanting to go that further step and produce a report that option is there for us as well so we've got this set to go now on the um, test for efficiency so you've got the countdown again so we can take that off to the array once it's told us it's ready everything else is set and all set to go so we've got recording running on the test instrument now and we've got recording if we can bring that into the right light on the solar o2 so we're going to take that off to the array now and we can connect our probes in to measure voltage as well. So everything's now running, you just need to leave it um, to gather a bit of data, bring the receiver back and it should then send the data into the instrument and link everything together. So just give it a couple of minutes or so or if the weather's a bit more variable you might want to give it longer. Um, but yeah, you don't need a great amount of data just to prove the concept that it's working but you need enough to work from. So again, it's downloading all that data and then it's going to analyze it. So this has now sent it over and we can have a look and see how that's all been collated. And we've got our um, watts per meter squared off the array. We've got some of the temperature correction factors that are predefined in the um, settings. And then we've got our peak output, the voltages, the currents and such. And again, that can all be downloaded in the software for more detailed and more in-depth analysis. But a really good feature to have in your testing kit if you're wanting to prove based on the weather and what's going on if these things are working as they should the pv check is the only way that ticks that box in the level of detail that you see in here on this video and there'll be a link in the description over to the tis website if you want to get some more details on this particular product so another awesome tool in the box is the pv iso test especially if you're working on larger arrays this will do your insulation testing up to 1500 volts on the strings which on some um, larger commercial systems is going to be present whereas the pv check maxes out at that 1000 volts so you can limit yourself sometimes so having this is a great way to also be able to cover off some of those bigger systems and it has the added extra feature of being able to find faults so if you have an issue on one of your strings you know especially in a large commercial rooftop where you could have hundreds of panels this has a feature where it can help you find that dodgy connection or frayed cable much more quickly and simply than pulling everything off the roof um, to try and dig into what's actually going on now fortunately we don't have a problem on our install here so I can't demonstrate that feature 
but this is another great tool in the box as I say especially if you are in the commercial solar PV side of things whereas the PV check is very much the multifunction beast for most solar PV installers especially if you're in the domestic space this is going to cover off all the testing you need you've got your short circuit current testing you've got your continuity testing your insulation resistance testing and this thing's happy up to a thousand volts and 15 amps on your short circuit current on your panels if you're working with things above and beyond that it's worth remembering that you're going to need some different test gear but TIS have you covered on that one as well so two great instruments when you utilized in the right way can help you determine if your systems are both safe and as we've shown today efficient so quick interjection from Sai with some of the reasons that we do the testing and how we collate that information, where we collate it and how it becomes useful. And we'll start with the design. So we're looking at electrical OM now and this includes both the AC and the DC side of things. We can show all of our final circuits as is normal but now thanks to the new features being built on all the time by the awesome people at Murdex Soft we can now put PV inverters, which will give us calculations based on um, the anticipated generation levels. As you can see in here, you can enter in your particular panel values and all of the other figures appropriate, and you get some form of output estimates in terms of the current and voltage and such that is gonna go on with your PV system. And it's brilliant that you can see all that as an overview of an entire install and transfer that over into your certification. Now, if we close down electrical OM, we can also have a look at Easy PV. So this is one of the free software packages you can use to help you specify your install. So it builds up a design. It's actually quite useful. It is through Midsummer Energy, so builds kind of shopping basket if you like through designing your project which if you want you can go off and order direct for them but outside of that it does give you most of the design data you're going to need in terms of your MCS and you can see on here with the particular install we've been looking at today there is predictions based on the output from the arrays due to the orientation and angles of the roofs all through the course of a year and if we go back to the project overview you can see what I mean here about the components that have been utilized. Um, you can get details on the consumption calculations. So if you're going to use a battery and such, it gives you loads and loads of information. And again, that's really, really useful. Now with Napit Fast Test, there is a new function on there as well, where you can record your test data from your PV array. And then you can use that in terms of commissioning data to the DNA. The G99 process, if that's what we're using, you make your application to the DNO, they'll say, yeah, go go ahead. And then you have to supply them with the commissioning data, which is basically the test results. So if we look at this one from NAPIT, it's got all the stuff you'll be familiar with from your AC kind of tests where you're putting your basics in, such as addresses, if it's a periodic or initial um, verification, and then obviously all of your details as the person signing your life away. And then there's the array test results. And depending on the number of strings and the number of inverters that you've got on the site, you can build this up. But essentially the core data is pretty straightforward. You need to be recording the modules that you're testing. So that's your solar PV panels, how many they are, and basically the output expectations of those at standard test conditions. And that is the, the terminology the industry uses in terms of the output expectations of a solar panel at a specific, a specific temperature uh, and iridience levels and such. And those figures are popped into the test as well. If you're using any string over current protective devices and in um, commercial systems, you more than likely will be. The string fuses, they're going to need to go in there as well. So you want their ratings, braking capacities and all of that good stuff. But on the system that we've got here, there is none of that. You're then recording the wiring types, so very similar to your AC kind of certificates, sizes, and then the string test data. And there's really only the, the three elements that are wanted on this particular segment um, for the string test itself, and that's your VOC, the ISC, and then the iridians value. A tick to make sure your polarity is in the correct um, order, and then also your array insulation resistance tests and that's between pos and neg to earth and you can see they are recorded on there as well if there's any earth continuity up to the array face that needs to be checked that the switch gear is functioning and then you're making a record of the make and model serial number of the inverter that you've checked and if there's a loss of mains test that needs to be done there's a box there to tick as well 
There is also a handy verification inspection schedule and this kind of leads you through some of the checks you need to make. It's, it's easy sometimes to forget this stuff when you're new to a new area of industry. So if you're in your first few systems, as we still are really, it's well worth running through each time as a, as a little check of yourself more than anything else. But you're doing a basic check of the modules from ground level, make sure nothing's slipped, it looks right and it's all in good order. Um, a visual check of the inverter, if there's any fault or damage to it. Um, a record, a recorded generation is increasing, so you can see that the inverter is measuring um, generation, and also if there's a separate meter fitted, that that is doing the same as well. A visual check for signs of structural distress, particularly after heavy winter snow. So if there's been some bad weather and such, give the system a good check over. Um, reduce shading from vegetation growth where possible. So if there's an opportunity to get rid of some branches or plants or whatever that may be causing an obstruction to the array or some moss that's built up on it, get that cleaned off. The AC and DC isolators are functioning, they're not damaged and there's no ingress of water and insects and such. If there's any DC junction boxes, there's no damage to those. The integrity of fuses and surge protectors, that's one to check. DC surges are going in more often than not now, so it's well worth checking the indicators on those. Generations in line with a prediction, and again that's where the TIS comes into helping you achieve that really because otherwise you're, you're working it out through calculations and guessing on what the weather's been for a particular period of time. Lots of these inverters now do have loads of data in them. I know the Give Energy system for example, you can see what the weather was, you can see the output in terms of voltages and temperatures of all of the equipment internal to the inverter and battery but the array is still kind of a bit of an unknown and that's where the test sequences come into their own. You're checking that the inverter is mounted securely, it's ventilated correctly, um, externally mounted inverters are free from any signs of water ingress, check the inverter fault logs, they do record if they've had fault conditions, AC voltages at the inverters, make sure there's no risk of over voltage, so that's where you're adding to the generation on the, the DNO network, you can push those voltages up, that your DC connectors are secure, free from damage and supported away from pulling water. And again, to make that check, really you need a DC isolator to be able to turn the energy off to them to safely remove them and make sure none of that is at play before you start touching it. But another separate little issue there. Clean the modules, particularly on a shallow roof. And we saw that, or we will see that on the install. I don't know where I'm going to place this into the video where the panels on my shed, they are a very shallow pitch and they were collecting leaves and dust and mess. And I was expecting it. I know I'm going to have to clean them regularly. It's all part of an experiment. It's not something we would really do for a customer, but I was prepared to put the effort in and try and get the best generation out of that little array as possible. So we need to clean them. And um, yeah, the test sequence today has helped show that that really is important because the output did go up quite dramatically, even in winter when they were given a good clean. You need to test your DC circuits, so you need to do your VSC, ISC and earth leakage. So that's the data we've recorded over on the, the other page prior. That the cables are supported and free from damages, the label's in place, if there's an emergency shutdown procedure that's visible. Um, check the clamps and torques if you've got access to the array. If you're doing a periodic, it may not be possible to get up there and start messing around with bits and pieces, but on your initial verification, make sure you are talking up your um, clamps. There is specific values for those. It's not just a case of four or five dugger duggers. Um, mounting rails secure and free from distortion. The string series resistance test is in good order, and the string insulation resistance test, such your riser, and any potential induced degradation test. So your string resistance test is your continuity, the insulation resistance test is your IR testing, and then the performance test would be your degradation one. So if you are expecting an array to output a set value, but it's been up for a number of years, the manufacturers will state what the anticipated degradation of their panels is, and all of that's kind of entered into the test set um, with some of the other figures where you go to add your array parameters, um, and it takes that into account. So you know if you're still within tolerance. And then the last one, there's a thermographic survey, and that's a new one we've just started doing. We have thermal cameras anyway for other bits of work we are we are up to, but that's a good way to check on a working array um, the temperatures around it. Um, you can do that from a reasonable distance as well, and also any connectors, if you can get a good shot of them, you know, you can see any hot spots and such. It's just a base level indication of where you might want to go poking around a bit more in depth before you start touching stuff 
So I hope that's been a little overview of why we are collecting this data, just to show you how this kind of presents. So when you're sending this back to the DNA, you get a proper electrical looking certificate, which has all the address details, all of the test values, the inspections that you've made, um, and they can go off to the DNA. They can go in your MCS handover pack, all for the customer. It looks professional. Someone can refer back to it later. It's good for your records. If you want, you can use Easy PV. So if you go into their um, forms section, you can see there is an array test report. You basically fill in all the data. So again, it is just data entry. And then if you go off after you've done that to generate a report, um, where is it? PV test report. You can see it transfers that over into a little test sheet, which basically has the same information as in the, the NAPIT um, certificate, but I don't think it looks quite as professional and it's not in the same kind of in keeping, if you like, with what we're used to as electricians. So I prefer to use the what I call the proper certificate, but each to their own. That's got the data in that you're going to need. And um, yeah, let's jump back to site and see how things are coming along over at the array. So you can see with this, it's perfectly possible to just use the Iridium meter direct into the PV check. So we see I've got that cabled in the top there. And for those of you who remember my shed array, it lives just up here. And I've popped the Iridium meter up there as well. And you can see again, there's not a great deal of sunlight up there. But it just shows you don't need the transmitter if you do have local access to the inverter and everything else all in one place. So we've got a good example of a DC isolator on this one that I wanted to quickly run through. So you can see on the bottom here, it's given us an indication of on and off, and um, it is a form of isolating those DC strings. The technicalities of whether these comply or not with the intent of the regs, I don't want to get into all of that because I don't fully understand what they're on about there. I know that they need to meet 60947-1-3, um, but by the by, the same principle applies regardless. My view is that if these have still got voltage on, and you're unplugging them from these connectors they're only really plastic and i don't think they're really designed to be popped in and out potentially a few times a year um certainly a few times over the lifestyle of all the products to carry out your testing i mean who's to say that that five years down the line this plastic's not become a bit brittle especially if it's in an outdoor location and you've isolated your dc isolator underneath the inverter gone to remove your strings and these things are falling apart inside your hands and it's all well and good that you need two of these things to go wrong at the same time but you know these they're not really separated a great deal if you look on the bottom of the inverters they're all pretty much the same with the way that they're set up it's very easy i think um in the worst circumstances for something to go wrong there and having a dc isolator allows you to make sure that the power can be turned off it can be locked off and there's no voltage present around places that you're interacting with connectors. Um, I just think it's infinitely safer and I don't buy into this mantra that the problem is with the MC4 plugs, sockets and DC isolators, the issue is with skills out in industry and connecting and terminating these things properly and we should be focusing on that and not removing points of safe isolation for working electricians, remembering that BS7671 is a wiring standard so they need to be in the wiring, in my opinion. And we've also got to ensure that we comply with EWR 1989, so the electricity at work regs. And as an employer sending people to work, that is absolutely vital to me. Not just our staff either, it could be different contractors coming along to maintain systems we've put in place later down the line. And I want them to have a nice place to isolate all voltages to do their work safely. If that's swapping an inverter, carrying out some efficiency testing, or whatever else that may be, get your DC isolator fitted and pay little attention to some of this nonsense that's floating around at the minute as regards doing away with them. It's crazy. And I should add, the only time I've said this before that I would maybe accept them not being there is if they are optimised. Solar Edge optimises example, drop them down to a vault on the output of the panels. But again, it's electronics. I don't fully understand how those optimisers work. They could go wrong. Voltage still could come out at a bigger value than it should do further down the line. I would much rather still have a DC isolator in the wiring so we can have an isolation in place beyond relying on optimisers, dropping voltages or whatever else is going on. But I would be less upset about it, being totally honest, than I would on normal strings. You can see I've got my current clamp meter there. I've actually come across a problem with this array down here, and it's not one that's unexpected. I'll show you why, but the efficiency values were below where they should be. So I've gone through the efficiency process out here again, as I've demonstrated um, inside. But if we look at the shed, and I can show you across to the back of the house, 
the trees have all started to, to lose their leaves and I think you can imagine where most of them might have ended up up there on my panels so we need to give them a clean off so we get that efficiency value back up um, and it's just an example I mean the leaves are you can see them I can go to the upstairs windows and I know that they're covered in leaves but it could be that there's some um, haze that's blown in from the Sahara or some of this dust off the farmer's field behind me there that's thinly coating the panels and you're not aware of it um, and it doesn't maybe get washed off as well as it should because the inclination on this roof is only really five degrees ten degrees at most um, you're maybe not going to notice it so doing the occasional efficiency test maybe once every year or every two or three years makes a lot of sense just to ensure that your system's performing as it should and that's something that we can start to offer as installers to our clients um, for maintenance packages because I think it's important we look after these solar PV systems if we come back and look at the house you can see the panels up there on the roof there the nine that we tested inside and you can see the pitch up there so I've been trying to match that as best I could um, down at the ground so obviously it's wet today I don't want to go up there unnecessarily with the ladders just to play about to make a video for YouTube um, especially when I like to keep my feet firmly on the ground but it gave us the right information in the end um, pretty easy to mock up from ground level if you are going out to do maintenance obviously you may not want to put your ladders up yourselves and there's no scaffold access you can go into the loft get the inclination of the roof off the structure itself and then using the, the data on the Solar O2 you can set it to that um, angle in the same elevation so you're getting a rough um, iridians value that's going to match pretty well with what's going on at the roof the only thing you're going to be lacking then is the temperature data because obviously you're not in close proximity to it and there you can see the panel is quite heavily covered with leaves and a little bit of algae that's starting to form and again that's due to the pitch of them I was expecting it so I can jump up there now give them a clean off and hopefully get that performance level up a little bit higher um, otherwise these have been performing excellently it's hard to show today because the sun's not out but it's pretty much tracks at the angle of this camera through these trees now so now the leaves are off we're starting to see a little bit more coming out of it even if it is laid flat and obviously in the winter months the um, more elevated sorry the higher your pitch the better the kind of performance you're going to get so these are always going to struggle but they're still contributing which is what it's all about so you can see it's a little bit cramped down here to demonstrate the testing sequence just because of where this fence is. So I'm going to run through the efficiency test now, I've cleaned those panels off and hopefully it's back in spec. If you've got any questions about solar PV testing or any particular part of it you want to see, please do drop them in with the comments alongside this video. I have shared examples of using the PV check and the ISO test on other jobs already. There is a solar design series playlist, so if you want to dig into that, there's some real world experiences of everyday bog standard electricians trying to get by out on site and ensure that our solar installs a top draw. I think the TIS team have given us some gear that is absolutely fantastic as installers to make use of and I've paid and bought for all of this stuff that I'm sharing with you today. And again, please do get involved in the comments with a wider discussion alongside this video and if you haven't already, it really helps the channel to grow and spread a little bit further with every extra like and subscriber. So please don't forget to do that if you haven't already.